Hello everyone. Wishing you a very good evening to all my lovely educators. This is Minakshi Narula, working as a principal at Shamford Futuristic K-12 School, Aurelia. And uh, before I begin today's session, I would like to show my gratitude to Teacher Class Foundation, who has given me this wonderful opportunity of sharing my learnings with all of you. And today, as you all know, we are going to discuss about cooperative learning strategies. So here, before I talk about cooperative learning strategies, I want you, my dear all teachers, to please do ping in the chat box. What do you mean by cooperative learning? Are you already using this in your classes? Are you familiar with this term, cooperative learning? And any kind of challenges that you are facing, you will see whether it is feasible uh, to go for this cooperative learning or it is very challenging or difficult for you all. So then only I will begin my uh, sharing of knowledge based on what you all will be sharing. So let me see what's there in the chat box. It's a group learning. Uh, some of you are saying is uh, no idea. Okay. Yeah, very good evening. Yes, peer teaching is a group work. Yeah, any more responses? Okay, so some of you are not having student teachers sharing, taking up all students together, learning with cooperation, group learning. Yeah, any more responses? Anyone, teamwork, yes. Learning through peer involving all the learners, making it attractive. Yes, wonderful. Thanks, my dear educators, for your wonderful responses. Like your different classroom activities are being conducted, discussions and all. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you all. So we will keep on interacting. We'll keep on asking more number of questions uh, to make the session interactive. So going ahead with this uh, cooperative learning, We're gonna talk about cooperative learning strategies today as uh, most of you have already pinged in the chat box. It's a group work and the picture already depicts students, they work together in group. They're the small groups, right? So they keep on sharing their knowledge and information with each other. Now, who has given this idea about this cooperative learning? This idea has been given to us by Dr. Spencer Kagan. He has given cooperative learning structures in 1985 in his book. And then he keeps on sharing number of strategies, cooperative learning strategies, and what was the objective to enhance the student participation, right? As most of you have already pinged in the chat box, in our classroom, we conduct number of activities, number of group activities, where we ask our children, either they are researching together, they are creating different kinds of posters, or maybe another kind of activities that they are doing. But in each and every case, like suppose I have divided my uh, my class comprises of uh, 40 students and I have divided them in five groups of eight each. Okay, eight members in each group. And then I will be assigning them some either collage making, either some research work, some project, some inquiry based learning. I mean, something when they are doing in a group, I have given to them and I am uh, asked them, I have asked them you complete this project. And when they will be submitting the project, they will be submitting the project all together. Right, I will be receiving eight projects from different different groups and I will not be able to get to know what is the contribution of each and every individual in that project that is a collaborative task when we ask our students to work together and they are working together collaboration is there and some of the shy students are there they do not want to come forward and some of the students uh, they just are some I, I should not use this word but uh, lazy I mean some of the students they just do not want to come forward I mean they just take the due advantage of other students you might have observed in your classes too like uh, they ask others okay fine you go ahead with that you do it please you do this for me this will be better I am busy I'm engaged with so and so tasks they try to give some kind of excuses so in that case if there are 
suppose uh, I, we have got eight groups of five each, maybe five groups of eight each, however. So in that case, suppose there are eight members in a group, right? So eight members in a group, two children, they are maybe shy, they don't want, want to come forward. Two students, they are having some questions in their mind uh, whether uh, my learnings, my research will be acceptable or not. Nobody should mock at me or some kind of questions are there. Okay, and two children, they are like that. Okay, fine, I do not want to come forward. They are always ready with the lame excuses or other. So, I mean, out of eight, only two are coming forward. They are sharing and that is the presentation of those two children. Does it happen with you also? I mean, have you observed this kind of scenario in your classes? If you can ping in your chat box, yes, yes or no, then uh, we can talk about it. It happens, yes, yeah. Yes, you are saying yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, it happens. So when it happens, so in that case, uh, what exactly is done is in cooperative learning strategy, we assign different, different tasks to each and every individual. So each and every individual is accountable for the role or the task assigned to that particular individual. And in, the, in that case, a teacher has to be uh, acting as a facilitator and teacher facilitator, the mentor ensures like all the children, they should be working pretty well. Okay, they should be participating in that event. Okay, and now moving ahead, uh, I just wanna talk about, as I've already shared with you, what is cooperative learning? Cooperative learning, each member of the team is responsible for their own learning, also for helping the teammates learn. Students work together to help one another. And there are basic five pillars of this cooperative learning. And all these pillars, for them, there is one mantra for cooperative learning. And I want all of you to ping, to chat in the box. Please do type swim or sink together. There is one mantra for cooperative learning, swim or sink together. Please, if you can type in the chat box, you will always remember that swim or sink together. Group division is for the learning abilities, taking care, swim or sink. S-I-N-K, S-I-N-K. It's swimming or sinking together. S-I-N-K, yes, is swim or sink together. Means if there are five members in a group. If one child is not doing the assigned task, the group will fail to achieve the objective. In Making that group successful, each and every child has to contribute. Each and every child has to complete the given task. So that's the mantra, swim or sink together. Either we all will swim, we all will be successful, or we all will sink together. We will not come forward with that. So that is the basic mantra for this strategy. Yeah, many of you are typing, all are performing at the same level. See, I'll keep on reading the chat box because I want to keep on interacting with all of you. Yeah, thank you. And now, what next? Uh, I have already talked about there are five pillars of this cooperative learning. First of all, it's positive interdependence. And this requires each pupil, each student in a small group to contribute to the learning of the group, as I've just already shared with you. And the pupils or the students, they are required to work in a way so that each group member needs the others to complete the task. And it is a feeling of one for all and all for one. So, I mean, these are basic punchlines that you all uh, should remember. Earlier we said swim or sink together and now we are saying one for all and all for one. As in the picture, you can see a project or a task has been assigned to the students and each and every child is contributing in that to make that project, to make that activity a real success. So the children, they are positively dependent upon each other. There is interdependence and it's really not like that. There is no... Uh, nothing, no place for jealousy, 
they are not getting envious there is not competitive spirit but there is collaboration amongst all the individuals because they know very well either they will sink or they will swim together right and they are meant all for one and one for all right so now the second one is individual accountability just look at the picture each and every individual has been specified a given task to complete a jigsaw puzzle as they are the parts of a puzzle so they will be completed when all the parts of the puzzle they are at the proper places so every child takes the accountability of the work of the task assigned to them and there is nothing i mean it is important that there there should not be any hitch hiking on the work nobody will be thinking okay my work will be done by him or my work will be done by uh, her no you have to be accountable for your work there is no hitch hiking right so the third punch word we have learned today so i'll just keep an eye on the pin punch uh, let's chat box too yeah one for all and all for one yeah there is no hitch hiking also there is a new term that i'm sharing with all of you no hitch hiking taking advantage of the other person no there should not be anything like that so now another is a promotive interaction students they need to do the real work together in which they promote each other success by sharing resources by helping by supporting by encouraging and by applauding each other's efforts to achieve see how beautiful the scenario is we people always keep on talking about inter class competition inter school competition this competition inter house competition blah 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 so many things i mean there always the people they are talking about competition competition in that competition what is there in our mind what is there in our mind that the next person the person who is competing with me should not get more marks should not do his project very well there should be some problem in his project so that my project will be uh, a success i mean that kind of feelings are there when we talk about competition sometimes there is a healthy competition too but generally it is not observed that takes uh, you see lot of uh, part lot of uh, responsibilities lot of knowledge on the part of the mentor as well and the students too but see here is a promotive interaction the children they promote each other like one member if he or she does something really very well other members of the team they appreciate they applaud i mean this can a kind of scenario where each one is very happy there is no place for jealousy nobody is envious they are sharing their resources too sharing is caring so another punch line that we have learned today so those who are raising their hands we will be having questions thereafter in case you have any queries related to the slide that i am sharing you may please keep on uh, writing in the chat box i will be keeping an eye on that and i will be responding to your queries if they are there so after each slide i i am in a habit of checking yeah sharing and caring to may promote each other wonderful hitch hiking so you all are with me i'm really very happy i mean we all are together learning the same thing so now moving ahead uh the next pillar of cooperative learning is group processing so the group processing all the members of the group they discuss how well they are achieving their goal and maintain uh, effective working relationships that is really very important they describe what member actions are helpful what are not helpful they are not discouraging discouraging each other but they are encouraging in a positive manner they are saying okay this is not to be done what if if do the work in this way that will be a real success and they make decisions about what behaviors to continue or to change means constant feedback is also there they keep on working on that and goal what is their goal there is a common goal there is a common goal what swim or sink together they know very well if they will be helping each other then only they will be getting success so goal is to improve the 
task work and teamwork of the next project after completing a task because step by step step by step when they will be achieving small milestones then only they will be able to achieve their goal see we are in our school we are having a vision we are having a mission vision is our goal and mission that is a road map that we design to achieve that vision so this group a particular group i'm talking about they have been assigned a particular task they have to achieve a goal and then they design their small small milestones when they achieve miles milestone one step they become very happy and then a second and then second then they keep on helping each other they keep on planning about their next milestone see uh, those who know in the company uh, there is assembly line the products they are being made one step second step third step so that's why we get the product finishing done so this is how they keep a track on the different milestone different steps one step if they are not doing proper they will not be able to go ahead to the next step right so they always keep a track they keep on analyzing thus we are developing on the higher order thinking skills as well and if we go for bloom's taxonomy i will not be sharing the same in detail because we will be uh, talking about cooperative learning but i just would like to tell you in a bloom's taxonomy when they are how many levels ping in the chat box how many levels in a bloom's taxonomy just write the number yeah five six there are six uh, steps yeah six uh, uh, steps are there first of all uh, so we have divided six into two parts lots and hots lower order thinking skills and then higher order thinking skills right lots in lots we have got three parts first of all is remembering when we remember when we memorize something then we move ahead with understanding and then we apply right so what all kind of we have give application kind questions also to our students that also come under lower order thinking skills only remembering understanding and then comes applying right and after that we come to hots in hots there are another three steps analyzing evaluating and creating right so we have got these six steps so here when we are working on cooperative learning strategies we are working on hots the higher order thinking skills the children they learn to analyze they evaluate see they analyze the situation they evaluate who is doing what and then they suggest various steps like what improvement is required if you go through bloom's taxonomy uh, verb list suggest come under the create category create is the higher higher order thinking skills so go by these terms also you should know the different terms that are given under various uh, the six levels of bloom's taxonomy that will help you to design the questions also so now we are talking about the higher order thinking skills here as you can see if you can go through the last three lines of this slide i'm going to read it once again after completing a task students must be given time and procedures for analyzing analyzing is at level 4 right higher order thinking skill how well their learning groups are functioning and how well social skills are being employed so social skills are being developed in small groups you know very well social skills they are very very important we are talking uh, about our students we are teaching them life skills values in delhi we are teaching happiness curriculum to our students and then uh, you see different different activities mindfulness activities are being conducted we conduct certain kind of activities where children they will be able to collaborate because we know sel social emotional learning is really very important that bookish knowledge is of no usage unless until they go ahead with social skills right so now moving ahead to the next pillar of cooperative learning that is see is small group social skills small group social skills and here i have highlighted basically one is conflict management and that is depicted in the picture also generally when we are working in a group how many of you have ever observed children they start arguing with each other this was my idea 
this was my idea he has copied my idea this was my work and he is or she is saying the work belongs to me and they start saying i do not want to be a part of this group please shift my group ma'am change my group i can't work here i mean how many of you have ever observed in your classes this kind of scenario i'm just having an eye on the chat most of the time in group learning we should keep the rubrics too which will make analyzing easy yes wonderful thanks for sharing yeah yes so most of you are saying it's, it's very very common generally students they have conflicts so in small group our objective our target in this kind of scenario is we going to talk about social skills as well students they learn academic subject that is a task that they are doing and the interpersonal skills as well in small group team work collaboration applauding appreciating each other's work sharing resources mutual respect I mean, all these things are really very important so given the complexity of the skills teachers they encourage much higher performance by teaching cooperative skill components within a cooperative lesson as students develop these skills later group projects will probably run more smoothly and efficiently than early ones now what does it mean i mean initially we will have this kind of difficulty but slowly and gradually when we will make this a part and parcel of our classroom right initially we may have such some kind of glitches are there some teething problems may be there but slowly and gradually the children they'll understand our language we understand their language they'll start understanding each other and slowly and gradually the groups they'll come together so wonderfully and some of the key skills i have listed over here effective leadership that is developed on rotation you give the leadership roles in groups if there are five members you keep on rotating the role of a leader decision making skills they are developed trust building is there communication conflict resolution is there when they know like initially you may also have to pitch in to resolve their conflicts but slowly and gradually they'll also understand we need to manage if there would be any kind of conflict in our group we will we will swim or sink if there will be any kind of conflict then what will happen we all will swim or sink any kind of conflict means there is no coordination there is no cooperation in the group so we all are sinking together so they'll understand right thanks all for responding and uh, keep buzzing the chat box so moving ahead so here is a glimpse of the five elements or the five pillars of cooperative learning we have discussed all five positive interdependence individual accountability promotive interaction or the face to face interaction interpersonal small group social skills and group processing they are working in a group so we have discussed about all five pillars now quickly have a glance at the benefits benefits of uh, this cooperative learning promotes learning and achievement it promotes learning when each and every child is taking the accountability of the task assigned he or she knows very well like my little contribution will be helpful in the success of my group they will be taking the responsibility we say boond boond se sagar padta hai each and every drop is important for the ocean right so retention it increases the retention of the students also see when i am talking in a class i am speaking like i am just sharing something lecture method only one uh, sense is involved only we are listening we are just visualizing the teacher and teacher when uh, asks us to write one more skill uh, sense is being used when teacher asks shows us some visual and other sense is used the more number of senses are involved the more is the learning right this so you all must agree the more will be the learning so here students they are working together in a group they are researching they are kinesthetic learning is happening they are moving here and there they are researching right and all the senses are being involved 
they are working together communication speaking listening to others also and then analyzing the information also whether the research work done by a particular member is up to the mark or not analyzing evaluating higher order thinking skills so their more concentration is being involved so they retain it for a longer period of time student satisfaction students really get satisfied because they will be having some questions too that first of all they'll be posing to the peer group and then finally if the peer group is not able to give the satisfactory answer they will be the, those queries will be pacified by the teacher and then four c's what are the four C's? Quickly ping in the chat box, what are the four C's? They are really very common. You know very well, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity. Yeah, peer learning is helpful. Yes, peer learning, they're learning from each other. Thank you. Yeah, so here you go. So four C's, these four C's, critical thinking they are critically evaluating whether the research work whether the work whether any particular part assigned to a particular person has been done to up to the mark or not right and creativity they are coming up with the creative skills as well innovative ideas because they have to do the level best something innovative as compared to the other groups and then uh, communication, they're communicating within a group, collaborating together. So all the four C's, 21st century skills that we talk about, they are being developed and social skills and self-esteem is enhanced. So these are just a few benefits that I have listed over here. Otherwise you can count number of benefits are there, right? So even if we achieve this, we achieve a great success. Let me tell you. So uh, if you talk about characteristics of the cooperative learning, uh, the strategies and all, self and group learning need not to explain. You know very well. We are learning. We are making our group learn too. Cooperative environment, sharing with each other. And this, I really would like to stress upon small groups, but small heterogeneous groups. You will not be dividing the students like all students who are uh, below average, they are in one group, who are in uh, average, they're in one group, who are extraordinary gifted, they are in one group. No, please go ahead with a heterogeneous group where you being a class teacher, you being a subject teacher, you know their performance. Some students, they are shy. Make sure if there are five shy students, they should be placed one in each group. One there are some students who are having leadership skills. They should not be all together put in a one group. They should be divided in different groups so that each and every group will be having students of different nature, of different learning styles, of different caliber, so that will help them work on the group and uh, certainly will be very fruitful for the group's uh, contribution and group's result. And then sharing information and resources. Yes, it talks about sharing information and resources and mutual help. As and when it is required, they will be guiding. It doesn't mean that you will be working for another person. You will just be helping. You can guide. You can put the person on the right track. That is really very important. It's not like that you will be doing the entire job for your friend. Like, okay, fine, you go and enjoy your party, birthday party, and I'm doing your work. No, it's not like that. So before moving ahead on the next slide, just let me have a quick look at the chat box, heterogeneous groups. We don't segregate students. Uh, okay. AFL strategy. Uh, yes, all these are assessment for learning strategies when we're talking about cooperative learning. All the strategies are formative learning strategies. Right. Thanks all for pinging in the chat box. <clears throat> so, uh, one who has written in the chat box, like we do not segregate the students, certainly we do not label the children. That I uh, know and that I appreciate. We do not label the children. Each and every child is unique. Each and every child is genius in his or her way. But we as teachers know what 
is the caliber what is the talent of the student what is his likes or dislikes maybe certain children they are very good at spoken certain children they are very good at writing skills certain children they are very good performers so you can divide in the group accordingly so that a group can present at its level best right if they have to write a report one child can help if they have to research and collect data one can help if they want to have one leader then can help so i guess there was some confusion i just read in the chat so i just wanted to take that question so yeah okay all right thank you so now moving ahead i am going to talk about uh, as per the paucity of the time i will be uh, sharing with you a few cooperative learning strategies the rest we can have one more session on that also because see one hour is insufficient to talk about different kinds of cooperative learning strategies the easy peasy lemon squeezy uh, the strategy share think pair share that we have been using in our classes number of times i want to start with that easy peasy strategy it is think pair share right think pair share in this strategy what happens if the children they are sitting in pairs it, maybe they are two sitting together on a seat right or maybe they are sitting four i mean you have changed your seats accordingly and then you have given them some task have students think or write about one discussion question they will be thinking and then allow students to turn to a partner and discuss their response so children they will be turning on to the partner suppose i have given one open ended question i am talking about uh, see always when i think i always talk about sustainability i always talk about the social skills if you have any question in your mind you can ping so that i can take your question and i i'll move ahead any one question if you can just pose in the chat box any one question that you maybe that today you uh, discuss with your students in the classroom any one question any one topic just ping in the chat box in any language in any subject that you have discussed today with your students any topic air pollution chali uh, rini ji thank you air pollution so if i have to discuss about air pollution i want to ask my children to suggest some ways to reduce air pollution now the child at seat number 1 will write a few points related to that child at seat number 2 will also write some points 3 4 and accordingly they'll be writing and after that what i will do after some time allocated time i either may ring the bell i may always or maybe check the time and accordingly i say okay now you may pair up and then 1 and 2 will discuss the points together they will share the points they may suggest each other right likewise 3 and 4 and then they will share with each other this is how they are learning from each other this is peer tutoring this is peer sharing as well this is a think pair share strategy i mean everybody is having his or her own experience so they will be sharing their experience their learning with with each other maybe one child is from urban background another is from rural background another one resides close to an industrial area another one maybe has recently migrated from a place from a hilly station so each and every child is having different experiences they will be sharing their experience with each other like this is how the same can be done right so being a teacher i may not be having that kind of different different experiences that the children have do you agree yes or no now this was your question only i have taken that example itself okay uh, you are just giving some linear equation and other topics you are giving okay periodic table yes so different questions you are sharing yes certainly they are having their different kinds of experiences so they will be able to share the same with them so now moving ahead another strategy yes that is jigsaw strategy as uh, the jigsaw puzzle we all are uh, we used to play jigsaw puzzle pieces of different puzzle working together so in that case suppose okay now you are going to give me the topic 
or I have to give the topic. I need a topic which will be having different subtopics. Yes, let me check the chat box. Let me keep an eye on the time also. Air, yeah, air, different types of pollution we have already taken, okay. Laws of motion, okay, great. So let me talk about that laws of motion. So here, when we are talking about laws of motion, Newton's first law of motion, second law of motion, third law of motion, right? So I will divide my class into four groups. I'll say group number one, you have to research something related to Newton. Okay, something related to Newton about uh, his, you have to write about the biography, you have to research about Newton, who was Newton, how, what about his inventions and all general things they'll be researching. Now I'll decide, uh, divide group number two, you have to uh, discuss, you have to research about first law of motion, then second law of motion, then third law of motion, or accordingly you will divide the class. Now the children in a group, there are four children, they are researching, you have assigned them some task, they'll be going to their home, there they will be researching, you can share some materials, some fruitful links with them, they can read some books, they can go to the library, they can they, they will be doing something at their home. When they'll be coming to the class, let them sit together in groups and then share the information, what they have researched about a particular assigned topic that was given to them. Okay, give them allocated time. Maybe you have divided uh, your 40 minutes into different, different, this thing, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you divide the timings accordingly. Okay, I am assigning you 15 minutes to discuss with each other. Now, these members, they are discussing with each other, they'll be sharing the information, maybe that comprises of some hands on activities too. First law of motion, second law of motion, third law of motion, they can demonstrate the same also through different kinds of activities. So when they are doing like that, now, one group I'm talking about, group number one, in that all the children, they have got expertise now on one topic because they have gathered information from the different members of the group. Now these groups, they have become expert groups, agree? They have got expert groups. Now what you have to do is, you have to mingle these groups up, take one, two, three, four, one, one child from each group and let them sit together. Now when they are sitting together, you have used 10 to 15 minutes from your class timings and rest of the time, you ask your children, they should sit together and they will be teaching each other. They'll be teaching other members of the group. Like here in this group, here in this group where the children, they are together. One, two, let me see, wait, just a minute. So here, when I am talking about, see here, one, two, I guess spotlight is visible now. One, two, three, four. Now, number one, the child is expert in each group. Number one child is expert and the child will be giving a brief about Newton, about his studies, about his birth, about his research, about his life. And then two, we'll be telling about Newton's first law of motion, second law of motion, and then third law of motion. So now they are discussing with each other, peer tutoring. Likewise, you divide different uh, you see, topics in your class. You are teaching about different kinds of nutrition. You may divide the topics in your class accordingly and let your students research, come up, read the book paragraphs, go and Google it, okay, find some examples, and then they will be sharing with each other, let them teach other students. Why you only, every time has to be stage on the stage. I mean, it should not happen. Every time you have to be there on the stage. I know everything. I have to regurgitate the knowledge that I have read from the book. Why? Why? It should not happen. Let them study. They know they have got ample resources from where they'll be able to get knowledge, information, data that will give them real satisfaction. They are the students who are always ready, who are always ready to share. I know this thing. Ma'am, I know it very well. Ma'am, I know. I have already researched. So let them come up. Let them share their knowledge. You agree? or not, share your opinions in the chat box.
Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Something, some comments, or some suggestions, something so that I can move ahead on the next topic, next example. Okay, we are still having time. We can discuss more strategies too. Okay, right. Now, moving ahead, circle the stage strategy. Now, this strategy, what does this talk about? As you can see, uh, there is one child in the center that is a sage, right? Now, teacher is not a sage on the stage. Children, students, they will be sages on the stages, right? And then other students, they will be asking questions to that sage. Now, how this strategy works, this I've already talked about, this strategy given by Dr. Spencer Kagan in 1992. And this focuses on selected students that act as sages on the stages. It provides the learners an opportunity to showcase what they know. If I want to discuss about any of the topic. Let me see if somebody has written some another topic. Let me take your topics only. Mm. Uh -huh. Peer sharing, yes, peer sharing is very helpful. Somebody has written active passive voice, okay? So I'm gonna talk about active passive voice, direct indirect learning, uh, speech, sorry, and, and maybe parts of speech I'm gonna talk about with my students or I will ask my students or oh, let us do it with parts of speech, right? I will ask in my class, okay, uh, the child who is saying that I'm very good at uh, explaining adjectives. Somebody is having got hold on adverbs. Somebody is very good at explaining the place of prepositions. So accordingly, I uh, will ask, okay, students, you may come forward. It's not necessary that students, they are always experts, but I will just take some of the students and then I will uh, ask those students that you will be acting as sages on the stages, right? It develops the communication skills, promotes self-esteem, promotes student achievement. There are certain benefits I have already talked about. Now moving ahead, what is the procedure? As a teacher, I will either announce a question, pose a question I've already shared with you, like we are talking about parts of speech. I will ask volunteers or the sages. Sages, they move to the different locations. Maybe you can go for four corner activity. Maybe you can design any kind of allocated places. And then other children, they will be divided into different, different groups. And sages, they have to answer the given questions, right? As by the different students. You can see I have divided into three groups. Now it depends upon you. You want to give the same question to all active passive voice. You want to give different questions to each group that depends upon you, right? So in the previous strategy, we had one one individuals jigsaw strategy where they paired up. Okay, and then we had got expert group. But here there are some sages. They are sharing the information with each other and other, they are answering other students' questions. Students, they return to their teams, right? Now students, they will go back to their team. They, these students, they have come from different, different teams. And then they will be discussing their learning and the notes related to suppose we have taken active passive voice or maybe parts of speech. Like I have learned from sage number one this. Second child say, I will have learned from sage number two this. Third will say, I have learned from sage number three this. And then they are sharing their learning together. They will be analyzing and then they will be creating their own manual from that. Like this is our learning and they'll be able to give their suggestions too. So this is the circle, uh, the say strategy. And the benefits are develops leadership skills, forces, students inform, uh, retain the information better. All are the same benefits that we, we can already, we can visualize from that. The last strategy that I'm going to discuss as for the paucity of time is mixed freeze pair strategy. In that strategy, you see, uh, we have divided the children in different groups. Classmates mix by walking quietly. Now, let me tell you, suppose I have got chits of various kinds of questions and I have got 40 students in my class, I will develop 40 chits or maybe some extra too, right? So 40 chits, I will be giving chits to each and every student. They will be picking up from the bowl maybe. So there are different versions, variations of the strategy. So now when they'll be taking the chits, 
if it is allowed, you can play a music also in the classroom it, as per your organization's rules, or generally you can have a bell too. Then the children, they will be moving, right? And then teacher will announce stop or maybe freeze. First, we have mixed then freeze and then the students they have to open the chits given to them maybe it is a word meaning maybe it is synonym maybe it is antonym any kind of activity that is there so accordingly children they have to spend some time during freeze time they have to see what this question is all about and then they have to find the pair by moving in the class so kinesthetic learning this may create some disturbance in the class if there are more number of students. So it works well when in which schools where there is less teacher student ratio in a classroom or slowly and gradually if you guide your children, they'll be able to manage the same. Now I'll be telling you the another version of this uh, strategy. You may ask your students like pairs to discuss the given question. Mix freeze pair strategy. This is a kind of thing, pair share strategy also. Pairs they discuss and then they share with the teacher and repeat with the different question. You have shared questions with the different pairs. One child speaks and then another child speaks. They will be sharing, right? Mix, pair, share. And then for the next question, when you will be sharing the next question, you have to change the pairs, right? You see, the first pair, second pair, third pair. They are having their own opinions. So now, then in the next question, you will be changing the pairs so that everybody will get chance to collaborate with each other. So this was all about cooperative learning strategies as per the timings. I could not share more strategies with you. Next time, we may have more number of strategies. Now, let me quickly have a look at the chat box before I uh, hand over it to you, the host for the day. Let me have a quick look at the chat box if there are any questions. Thank you for your wonderful comments. It will take more time. Yes, certainly it will take more time, but it depends upon the number of the students. Yes. Uh, any questions? Somebody has written. name of the strategy that used to teach uh, parts of speech. See, circle the sage strategy. And uh, there was one carousel strategy also that you can also use a number of strategy that is also a wonderful strategy. It's a, uh, you see, version of a station rotation strategy is a kind of that strategy. We will be talking about that. Uh, somebody saying, I'm not getting, I mean, you are not getting, you're not understanding or you're not getting the link for the, uh, feedback. Uh, Ma'am, I guess uh, the video recording will be visible. That will be available on this channel. You will be able to see that. If you have any questions, you can ask. And uh, we will be having one more advanced level session for this uh, cooperative learning strategies. Yes. Any other questions if you have? No, ma'am. No more questions left with us. Thank you. I'll just stop sharing my screen. Thank you. Thank you, Minakshi, ma'am, for your time. Thank you, participants, for joining. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thanks Thank you so much.